We just lost the live. Oh my God. Minhas, if you can come back on. Oh my God, I just lost the whole live. We're going to have to do it again. I'm going to cry. I'm literally going to cry. Okay, let me try and get Minhas back on. Oh. <laughs> I just lost the whole life. Minhas, I just lost the whole life. I'm so I'm gonna it's cry. Right. We're gonna it's meant to happen. It's it's meant to happen. happen. We're, gonna have to go through, we're gonna have to go through it again just to <laughs> so I can save on my IGTV because that was a deep conversation, okay? So let's go back to your the talk about your father. About, you know, basically the, the breakthroughs that you had with him. I think that you realized that all along the stuff that happened between you and him he was dealing with his own traumas and for you to be able just to sit with him and have a conversation with him heart to heart. I think that's where you created that healing, especially with the money, especially with the spirituality as well. Right. Yeah. You know, the crazy thing is, Rosaline, it's like I have students now who I'm helping to do that. And it's like, I, I, I see myself in them because I remember when I first started this journey with you and I was like talking about my dad, it was like, there's so much pain for so much anger. And now it's like, I, I was blessed with the gift of like, if you can go there, go where you don't want to go and sit there until you no longer are afraid. Mm. It's like the blessing that comes from that is truly life changing. And it's like, I, I, I do this with him again and again. Every time I feel resistant towards him, I just, I even just sit there. Like, I don't even say nothing sometimes. I just sit there, and just breathe. <laughs> right. Oh my God, you're triggered, right? When you're feeling triggered, it's like, okay, I need to go and sit with that trigger. Because most of us, most of the time we avoid, right? We just go and run away from that trigger. We tell ourselves, I'll deal with it later. Or I don't need to have a conversation about it. Let me just go figure it out. And then it, it festers like a wound, right? So you being able to go deep into that relationship with your, fa with your father, I find that so like phenomenal. And I, I feel like so much of our audience can relate as well with their parents. Like, especially if you're from a South Asian descent or even Arab descent, you may not have that kind of relationship with your parents. It's very difficult to talk about your emotions, right? But you're very open now with your parents, right? About your emotions, how you feel, what you're going through. Like one thing I can say to everyone, like even one of my students, he called me and he's like, he dropped, he dropped out of uni and he's just committing to his dream. And he was just like, they, they, they've received a letter. What do I do? What do I do? And I was like, speak from the heart. Mm. You know? And he's like, no, they're going to kick me out the house. I was just like, hold on, hold on. Speak from the heart. If you lie, they will kick you out the house because they're going to be, you know, they're going to feel a disconnect. But when you speak from your heart, they can't abandon you. They'll be abandoning themselves if they do that. And if they do, that will be a reflection of how they treat themselves. And I was like, if they're connected to their heart, there's no way they can abandon you. And that was like something that I practice. It's like, no matter how intense the conversation gets, I will speak from my heart. And it's like, I know my heart can speak the truth at all times. And it was just like, that was the revelation, I think. It's like speaking with my parents. It's like, no matter how unconscious people would say, you know, you don't approach someone who doesn't know about healing and trauma work. And I still like, approach them from the heart and I say, God will do the rest. Mm. To. I love that. God is the center of your world now. And I love that. I love the fact that before you were so afraid to even speak about Allah, speak about your faith, speak, even pray. And now you're like, it's before that. It's the end of 2020, nearly. And alhamdulillah, I think what's more important than making 5K a month, which you, you went from zero to 5K. That is so fantastic. That's phenomenal. But the, but the fact that you've reconnected with Allah, and I think that's such, a, that's such an invaluable gift to have um, that people don't value it that much. Like right now in, in the social media world that we're in, like connecting with Allah is so important. And the fact that you have that right now, I think that's worth more than gold, all the gold in the world. I know, right? And I, it took me such a long time to get to this. And, and what, like, I, I always said that to everyone that mentioned it to me. I was like, when that door comes, I will go through it fully. But now that I'm here, I'm just like, how is this, like, what is happening to me? And I'm, I'm naturally just implementing things. Like, I, I, so, I trimmed my head. I was just like, I wanted to get rid of the old me fully. And now I just, I like wearing these hats now. It's like, it's like part of who I am, you know? That <laughs> is. It's always been who you are. And you know the fact that you drew a picture of yourself on stage? And you know what? There's another client that I had and she goes randomly, she came across a book and inside the book she had written, I'm a millionaire. And this was in 2010. And now she, this is like we're in 2020, 10 years later. And she finds that book and she reads it and she was like, oh my days, 
I did not know that all this time I wanted to be a millionaire. And it's the same with you. I think for you, you've always wanted to be on stage. You've always wanted to like share your passion with the world, share your healing journey with the world. And you're doing it right now on social media. That's just phenomenal. I feel like our, our, you know, our past leaves clues to who we really are before people tell us that we can't. So when you were 16, you didn't care what people told you that, you know, you can't do it. You just lived that dream in your mind. And now it's coming to fruition. I think I always knew that I wanted to speak about something that could change the world, but I never knew what it was. And it's like, I, I, I started with myself first as in like healing myself and took that so seriously. And I dedicated everything to it. And I just didn't like the fact that people said, you know, you can't like, you need, I, I was, I had abandonment wounds. Like, you know, I didn't like reaching out for help. I'm going to be honest about that. Yeah. And it's like, I thought I'm going to do it myself. I'm going to do everything myself. So <laughs> right and that's which you can talk about a little bit <laughs> the perfectionism that you had as well do you remember that little bit of perfectionism <laughs> showing up like I'm on point all the time and it was <laughs> it was holding me back and I think even like doing everything myself I had to learn like even reaching out to you I think you were the first person that I was just like I, I don't like I don't feel this doesn't feel natural for me because I still feel like I can there was a part of me that felt like I, I have to do this on my own like um I can't ask for help. Right. Um, yeah. That's so a deep. Help me kind of break that. Yes. I think that's a deep one, especially for coaches. Cause I think us coaches feel like we need to have it all together. Like we need to look perfect. We need to have all that, um, a, B all the way to Z all figured out. And that's not the case. We're human beings. We're going to fall. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to sink. Sometimes we're going to fall into like depression, anxiety. That's why you need to have someone in your corner. That's going to, say to you listen I recognize the the good in you like I know where you're going and we need to stay focused and I think that was that was the thing for you I don't think you ever had any fears come up I think the only fear that you had was the investment when you made that investment you were like oh my god like am I ever gonna am I gonna be able to pay it but the fact that you just took that leap and said to yourself you know what five thousand pounds is worth it and now you're making five thousand pounds a month like that is so deep but it's just like asking taking the leap to ask for help and I think because um when it comes to like cultures class be I I work with so many people of color. I know in the culture, being strong means you don't ask for help. So how did you break that pattern? I I knew the saying, like it was just like, what you give, you shall receive. And it was just like, I knew that if I can't ask for help, no one's going to come to me for help. Do you know what I mean? Like that, that was a principle that I realized. It was like, if I can't even go to someone for help, then I'm blocked off from even someone coming to me for help. It's like the act, it's like a natural thing. Like we can't, you can't give. If you can't give, you won't receive. If you can't receive, you can't even give. So it was like, I knew I have to break the pattern. And and I knew deep down inside of me, it was because I, like, I did a lot of healing around this. And the trauma was like, as a child, every time I, I needed help, I felt like there was no one there for me. Like emotionally. Yes. You all felt alone, right? And that alone feeling is what you've been carrying your whole life. You made it your blueprint. Okay, well, as a child, no one cared about me and it didn't matter. So let me go and live that blueprint out for the rest of my life. And this is why I always say, you can't make, you can't get results if you keep making the same decision, if you keep doing the same thing over and over again. That's the definition of insanity. Like you want, you want to become a millionaire or you want to become rich or you want to have a deeper connection with Allah or your family, but you're doing the same things like, you're not investing, you're just playing small, you're taking tiny little baby steps rather than knowing that, okay, I'm going to take the leap. I know if I take the leap, there's going to be massive transformation. That's where you get the breakthrough. But if you constantly just stay stuck in the same pattern and then expect a different result, that's like the definition of insanity, right? So just you telling yourself, listen, like I know if I remain the same in 2020 for the rest of my life, if I remain this way, feeling stuck, feeling broken, feeling broke, like not making the money in the coaching business, like how would your life would have looked, Minhas? Like let's say we're talking <laughs> point, point, December now. How would your life... <laughs> how would we I would have... <laughs> you know, I used to go to work, right? I used to get my phone out, like same I used to work in like a little local supermarket and I would put my phone out and I was like, I would keep saying like, guys, I'm about to quit my job and I would just fake it again and again and again. <laughs> and I never knew how that was going to come. Like all my customers, I would tell them like, yeah, I'm, um, I, they asked me, what do you do? I was just like, oh, I was like, I'm a life coach. And they're like, wait, what? And I was like, yeah. and I was like all right, we're going to take a time. We're going to take a while to break this down for you because now you're going to ask me so many questions. And then I would be like, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to do. And then they'll walk away and I'm like, 
or when? Like, when's that going to happen? Like, <laughs> and then you go back to work and like, yeah, it's just a dream. Let me just keep playing myself. Let me just keep dreaming and not, let me not take action. I think that's what a lot of people do. We just dream and it's amazing. Yeah. To dream. It's amazing to have all those goals written down. But if you're not taking action on it, then it's not going to happen because Allah requires you to take action. I think a lot of us think, okay, I'm going to make dua and it's going to fall in my lap. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> You have to take action. You have to go and speak to someone who's doing the thing that you're doing and ask them, listen, I need your help. And that's it, right? You have to go out and ask people. And I think the less, the less we, um, if we don't ask, we will not get, just like you were saying, ask and you shall receive. And I think a lot of us don't realize that when you ask, you get it. That's just, that's just it. That's the secret to success, asking for it. And I want to touch upon the, on the perfectionism that you had, right? Um, I remember we had a session, it was like a 30-minute session, um, um, and we went to the root cause of the perfectionism. How how has your life changed since you got rid of that? I mean, you're seeing it, right? Like, look look behind me. Like that. That's not, no perfection there, my friend. Right. Do you know how how much of a struggle it was for me to just be like, that's it. <laughs> I know. I was shocked when he said that. I was like, what? He's literally ripped off his whole wallpapers and. He's like shedded his old, old identity of trying to be this guy who's perfect and has it all together and wants to make everything look so perfect all the time. That was amazing, mashallah. Thank you. And I think it was the massive breakthrough through that moment was like, I, I realized it was, I, I needed something within me. It was like I was craving an, a, a love from, I was like seeking that from external sources, like people. Yeah. And whereas it's like, as we did that healing session, I realized it's like, it, this is something that I must meet within myself. Even like that self-talk that we have when we're feeling, you know, the, the fear come up. It's like, I, I had to change that, the way I'm, sp I'm speaking with myself when I'm in pain or feet, when I'm going through my own healing. And I think that was the moments where everything changed. And it's like, then I fully just trusted God. Like he's gonna, he's got my back, you know? Like, I, I, we have to remember that we can never be perfect. That's only for Allah alone. That's only for God alone. Allah is the one who's perfect. Our goal is to try our best and to have the to have the most excellent execution. Be excellent in what we do. Not perfect, but excellent. Like we try our best. I remember in the session, it was so hard for you to get rid of the perfectionism. It was so stuck. <laughs> you don't understand. This wall, I thought, I thought I'm going to have to break it down and take it with me when I'm <laughs> gone from it. <laughs> no way. And the truth was behind it all. It was like, I was, I was, I was holding myself back in so many different ways. I didn't even see it. And it was like, I needed to value who I am inside of me. It's nothing outside of me. And it's like, that's why I stripped this whole identity is gone. And it's like, I don't really care what anyone says anymore. Like, I, I don't have that. Like, I, I, I can, you know, it's a blessing. I feel, I feel it blessed. Now. <laughs> it's like, like, I think, I don't think people realize how much of a blessing it is to just do you to go out there because you're doing something wonderful. You're helping, you're healing leaders. You are healing them so that they can go and heal the world. You're creating a ripple effect. Clients are coming to you because they know they need some inner deep healing. And the stuff that you do is phenomenal. Guys, go check out Just Minhaz. Send him a DM. If this, if this live hit you, send uh, Minhaz a, uh, a DM. What program do you have at the moment? Just let everyone know. So thank you for that. And right now what I do is basically I've, I condition people to go where they don't want to go naturally. Like it's one thing doing it with a coach, but it's like, I, I really want people to be able to see that within themselves without a coach. And it's like, after I'm done, it's like, I want them to be able to become a coach, like for others, like naturally, not even do it in through, through a way where maybe you're a service provider like we are, but it's like, you are going to do that with your friends, family, naturally, like no one's going to say nothing. And I had students who heal their relationship with their family and it's like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Like that's, that's, that's the biggest blessing out of the work that I do. It's like they're able to show up with their family. And I honestly believe when they, when you, someone can do that, they access parts of themselves that can show up in every other area of their life in terms of financially, confidence, people pleasing, everything. So that that's amazing. what I do. <laughs> that's phenomenal thank you so much for sharing that um, in has so what's your final thoughts about spirituality i know my live deleted so i don't have the previous part but you know this is still gonna hit inshallah what's your final thoughts on spirituality and how to like overcome that fear of just putting yourself out there as who you are i would say in terms of spirituality like understanding that you know if it's, it's, you want to connect to your heart the most and your heart will lead you where you need to go 
And I truly believe right now is that God bleeds us through our hearts. And we live in the devil's playground. I look at us, we're using a, a social media platform that was created not for the best intentions for the people, mm. but we are using that tool for good, right? We're, we're shining a light in the dark. And I believe like you need to know who's holding the light for all of us is God, right? And but there's 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 evil forces out there that are pushing against the, the people holding light. And if you want to if you want to be on the right side, which I'm, I'm sure every single person watching this is, it's like you know truly engage with your heart, and your heart will show you the way. And for me, that was like starting to pray fully, commit fully, and question yourself when you say this is hard for me to do because I feel like we're in the devil's playground. So you know, be smart about whose side you're on, right? And I'm which side that. you want to fully gone that is for me that that's like my greatest blessing it's like the fact that i can see it that way and i feel like nothing can stop me now and we're just getting started you know? <laughs> 21 you're gonna hit six figures like you're already you're already hitting it you're gonna hit six figures then i remember your dream was to have your have all your family um working with you in your is it your branding agency i remember Six that vision agency yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. And I can see that happening for you. Like, because, and I, I want you to touch upon your grandma's du'a just before we finish about your grandma when she, um, I don't know what you, you told me the story about your grandma. I want you to share it with the audience. I think I was looking for signs. Like guys, if you're, if you're struggling to pray, ask God, he will show you signs of what you need to see. And I said, show me the sign and I will commit. I swear I will commit to you. And it's like, my nan my grandma she was having this conversation with my mom she was like talking about how she wished she had a house and i am that person like that secret millionaire undercover boss i was just like i want to go in places and change lives you know for, like like that yeah. and then i thought to my nan i said man you know things are going on really well in my business and i just want you to be like have pray for me and then um, i said i'm gonna buy you a house one day inshallah and she just bursted out crying and she hugged me and then she, like every bit of trauma I've ever had in my life with my nan at that point, I was just like, like it was, it was healing. I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> Love her, friend. That is amazing. Love her friend. <laughs> and she was a tough woman. She's a very tough woman with a lot of history and trauma within her. And she was crying like a baby in my arms and I was just holding her like I was holding myself. And then she looked, she leaned back and we were both staring at each other and she was staring in my eyes. I was like, I was feeling so much energy being released from my body. You know, understand? Like, I, God took over at that point. I was like, all right, I surrender. <laughs> like, no. Then my nan was like, if you want to make your dream come true, and she said, I don't even care about the house, the fact that you said it, but if you want to make your dream come true, I'm going to give you a Quran. You're going to take it home with you. You're going to read it and you're going to make it happen. And I was just like, no. and I, I, at that point, I was like, that's it. I'm done. What? This is the sign. That's the sign. Yeah. Thank you. So many of us ask for signs. When the sign comes, we're like, no, this is not the sign. But the fact that you lent into it, you leaned into it, that is phenomenal. So, yeah. Thank you so much, Minhaj. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your journey with me. It's been phenomenal. Guys, if you're watching the replay, it's going to be on my IGTV. Hashtag replay and let us know your insights. And, yes, please do send Minhaj a message if you want to get into his programs or into his one-on-one -on -one sessions. He's phenomenal at what he does. So, yeah. Thank Take you. care, everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Assalamu alaikum. Uh